friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Megan and today we are sharing all of the books I read in May and holy cannoli did I have a wild month. So I'm going to start off with the five nonfiction books I read. I don't tend to rate nonfiction books but I did want to give you kind of my review per se but yeah, I don't like to rate them just because I know that often I feel weird trying to rate people's knowledge or stories or what they've researched so I just feel weird rating nonfiction for whatever reason. The first one I read is Get Out of Your Head and I'm gonna not lie um, although I don't like to rate nonfiction books this is probably one of my least favorite nonfiction books I've ever read. Um, it is told from the perspective of a Christian woman and I myself am Christian. I love God. I'm religious. I do believe in a higher power. But this was almost overbearing and it felt more like preachy and I don't even know what the correct word would be but it was not at all um, what I expected it to be. The tagline is um, how to avoid the spiral of toxic thoughts or something along those lines. So I am trying to get out of that spiral per se but it was more like I don't even know how to describe it but it was more like what she would do as opposed to giving helpful hints um, and how she figured things out and how she's doing perfect now um, not perfect but she's doing better now and it didn't at all really feel like it gave any hints and I felt like it was all over the place like she was talking about her sons breaking her daughter out of the bathroom I don't even know but it just wasn't really my taste. Next I read Burnout and I thought this was going to be the best book because I have been over committing entirely in my life and I really thought that learning how to deal with burnout um, was going to be a great book and a great manual per se for me but I really didn't gain any knowledge from this book. It was entertaining and it did have some, I guess, helpful tips, but it's nothing that I didn't already know. I feel the same about when things fall apart. Um, it was entertaining and I gained a few things from it, but it wasn't really giving me anything I didn't already know. I feel like you guys can see where my mental state is <laughs> between all these non-fictions. Next was The Listening Path, and I actually really enjoyed this one. It is a six-week workbook, and I feel like I would have enjoyed it more and gotten more out of it if I had done it in the actual six-week time frame. But alas, I have checked it out from the library, and people were waiting for it, and I wasn't able to renew it, so I did have to do it um, in three days-ish. But I did gain some good knowledge from that one. And finally is Bad A Habits. And this was definitely my favorite of the month. I actually gained quite a bit. I did, uh, it's a 21 day workbook, but I feel like I still gained everything I needed from it. And I picked up a lot of great hints and I started my own habit tracking sheet in little spreadsheets. So that was definitely my favorite nonfiction book. Next to get into some of the series slash sequels I've been reading. Uh, I did do a reread of Wicked Fox by Kat Cho in order to pick up Vicious Spirits this month or June. Um, so I did reread this. I think I enjoyed it more on the reread, which is nice because it wasn't necessarily my favorite on the first read. But I do think I enjoyed it more on the reread slash audiobook version of it. So I'm interested to see how I feel about Vicious Spirits. If you aren't aware, Wicked Fox tells the story of a gumiho or a nine-tailed fox who is also a female named, I'm blanking on her name, uh, Mi Young. And she is trying to fit in with the human world, but this boy right here named Ji Hoon discovers her secret and it's basically like a, I wouldn't say enemies to lovers, but friends maybe to lovers and it was super, super cute. Next, I did a reread of one of my absolute favorites, Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpretto. I literally rave about this book all the time, and Wings of Shadow is coming out in July, so of course I did Crown of Feathers in June, or sorry, Crown of Feathers in May, Heart of Flames in June, and then I'll read Wings of Shadow in July. I mean, you can see clearly how much I love this book. This is like all my annotations. I feel like I was doing every other page 
if not every page. It's seriously so thick with post-its and I just love it so much. It tells the story from three different perspectives. First we have Veronica who all she wants to do is be a phoenix writer. However the clan is only taking males so she has to disguise herself as a male to join. We're also following Tristan who is the commander's son and he is a phoenix writer afraid of fire. And finally we are following Seb who is an animage which is basically like the slaves of the war and he is actually also a soldier so he's hiding his animage abilities while he's on the enemy's side and he's feeling a lot of guilt on both sides so all absolutely stunning please 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 if you take nothing else from this video read Crown of Feathers. <laughs> Next I did my reread of Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo, the sequel to Six of Crows. Same as last month when I talked about my reread of Six of Crows, I loved it just as much if not more. We got to learn more about Nina and Matthias and then the big incident happens that's so sad and we meet um, Sturmhound and it's just a great time. So those were my rereads. Now on to the books that I continued the series for. Um, I continued the Illuminate Files trilogy slash series by reading Obsidio, which follows Asha and Reese. Reese is part of Baytex soldiers, and Asha is back on Carinza, where um, she's also Katie's grants from the Illuminate, like the first book. Um, she's Katie's cousin, and yes, it's following their story on Carinza. So while the disasters are happening in space, they're back on Carinza, where the initial disaster happened, and trying to break off Carinza. Um, probably my least favorite of the series, but it was still so good, and I'm still in awe of how they create a multimedia format that is able to be read as a full story. It's so, so good. And the reason I said trilogy slash series is because I also read Memento, which came as a pre-order incentive for Obsidio, I believe. And it's basically a short story about Aiden's backstory or origin story. And I freaking loved this. It was so, so good. Yes, if you get the opportunity to read it, not a lot of physical copies out there but you can read it in audio or um, ebook from your library so check it out. The next series I finished was the selection series finally by reading the kind of spin-off of The Heir and The Crown in which we are following Edlin which is America and Maxine's daughter and it's following her perspective of the selection so being the selector and I absolutely loved it. I kind of expected the ending and who she was gonna end up with, but I love how it all played out so, so much. Yes, definitely a guilty pleasure series. <laughs> Next, I continued the series, but unfortunately the third book doesn't come out till like October, but I did read the sequel. Um, it is Well Played by Jen DeLuca, which is the sequel to Well Met. This is told in a renaissance fair universe and in this book we are following stacy who is the barmaid alongside emily from the first book and it's her story she is texting a guy named dex and she's been hooking up with him at the past two renaissance fairs and decides to take their relationship further and they are talking and she essentially gets catfished so it's that story <laughs> but it was really really good I definitely did prefer well met but I think Stacy's character was also really really relatable next are all the manga and graphic novels I started so because I finished Fruits Basket in April I started a new manga series in May so I read the first five volumes of The Promised Neverland and I'm not even kidding you guys I think I found my new favorite manga I did try the first episode of the anime and for whatever reason the animation just makes me super uncomfortable so I don't know if I'll watch the full anime. It might have just been the first episode. I don't know. Um, but the manga itself is so intriguing 
we are following a orphanage in which these kids find out a secret that makes them want to escape the orphanage and I'm not gonna go further than that so I don't give spoilers but it follows like their escape from the orphanage and it's so good um, and I honestly I finished volume 5 like I've already bought these volumes that's how much I love the series I normally only read manga from the library unless I'm absolutely in love with it I didn't pick up the fruits basket mangas until after I'd finished the series but I already know I love the series so much that I've already started buying the manga um, so yeah that's where I'm at <laughs> I also started the amulet graphic novel series I believe that there's only nine volumes so I did read the first three it is a middle grade graphic novel series in which we are following Emily and Navin who are brother and sister their father was killed so their mother takes them to a house and the house is of her grandfather or great uncle or something like that it gives me like the live action nutcracker vibes um and in the basement it leads to a secret world where emily um becomes the owner of a amulet and a she is known as a stone keeper and has power over this amulet and she is then tasked with beating the elf king and saving all these citizens from the elf king in this world uh, there's also a moving, I don't know if you can see it, like a moving house, which gives me house moving castle vibes, and it's pretty cute. The first novel didn't really, like, pull me in, but by the second novel, I was really enjoying it. Next are two books I read and enjoyed, but I'm probably not going to be keeping. These were both three stars for me. The first is The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg, which is a dystopian sci-fi murder mystery and I was not expecting it to be as dark and heavy as it is but we are following one of the cyborg princesses and one of the other cyborg princesses was murdered and has gone missing so she's on the hunt for what happened and then I also read I hope you get this message which is a dystopian sci-fi contemporary and we are following a world in the future in which aliens are about to eradicate the human species and they are going through a like like they're in court to decide whether or not to eradicate the human species and then we're also following three perspectives Jesse and Kate and Hadim. Hadim is a amateur ham radioist in search of his sister Jesse is like a punky gay guy that is trying to learn about his identity but also make money so that his family doesn't go homeless and then Kate is a girl whose mother is schizophrenic and she's on the hunt for her dad so it's basically their stories and how they're dealing with the last days on earth both were good I don't really have strong opinions either way I probably will never read them again so that is why I'm going to unhaul these two. Next I read an adult romance, Olivia Dade's spoiler alert, in which we are following Marcus, who is the lead actor in a mythology-inspired TV show that is kind of taking a turn for the worst and really navigating away from the true plot and true character arcs of the book series because it is based on a book series. And so he writes fan fiction and has a secret identity on this fan fiction site as correcting the mistakes of the TV show. And then we're also following April, who is a geologist and is also on this fan fiction site. And they know each other through the fan fiction site, but not in person until one day April posts a picture of herself as Lavinia, which is the female character that Marcus's TV show character was supposed to end up with uh, but did not so he likes the photo on Twitter and then there's like backlash because April is a plus-sized woman so Marcus takes her out on a date to calm down the haters and they end up falling in love but they she doesn't know that Marcus is also the fan fiction guy so it's interesting and it delves into a lot of like how to deal with someone's secrets and someone's past and um, there's a lot of 
emotional baggage in this book, but I really enjoyed it and yeah, I can't wait for the sequel which is following one of Marcus's co-stars. Next I read The Kingdom of Back, which is a historical fiction fantasy. Uh, this is by Marie Lu and it is following Mozart's sister and Mozart's sister Nanarel, I think is how you pronounce her name. He has a dream of being a great composer just like Mozart. However, because she is female, she is not given this opportunity until she meets Hyacinth, who is a fae princeling of a magical world that comes to life through Mozart's and Nanarel's composing. And Hyacinth offers her the chance to get her like most desired wish. So it was a really great story about be careful what you wish for. Next I read Into the Dark by Claudia Gray which is the next book in the High Republic arc for Star Wars. I've currently read three books I believe, Light of the Jedi, then Test of Courage, and now Into the Dark. In this we are following a few different perspectives. We have Wreath Silas who is content just being an archivist Jedi for the rest of his life. He has no desire to get out on the frontier per se. However, his master encourages him to go get some experience. So he is given an assignment on Starlight Beacon uh, alongside two other Jedi, Cormac, um, Orla, and Dex or Dev. I'm blanking on names and it's not in the synopsis. But essentially three other Jedi alongside um, Affy as well. Affy is a young female who is the daughter of the head of the like trade market but she's the foster daughter but she's also the heir to this trade market and then also Cormac and Orla Jenny I believe Jenny um, are master Jedi so it's just a bunch of different perspectives and the main theme of the book is really discovering if you're doing things for selfish reasons or selfless reasons. And then alongside the Star Wars talk here, I did want to mention that today I went to, today's the 31st, and on the last day I went to Barnes & Noble to pick up a few books, and while I was there I came across the picture book that's part of this arc as well of The Great Jedi Rescue, and it was only 28 pages, so I read it right there in Barnes & Noble. It's essentially a picture book following the events of Light of the Jedi, but I'm gonna include it and count it towards my book goal, cause why not? And you thought we were done? Oh no, no, no. We have four more books here. Uh, next is my four favorite books of the month. So first we have Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This is pitched as Mulan meets Project Runway. However, I don't know if that's the best pitch for it because the like dressmaking competition only encompasses about the first half of the book. However, we are following Maya who is always dreamed of being the Emperor's tailor. However, because she is female, she is again not given this opportunity. Um, so she dresses as a boy and enters as her brother to become the Emperor's next tailor. So the first half of the book is the competition and then the second half of the book is the final trial and so she goes on a journey to make a dress out of the sun, the moon, and the stars. And I love this book. A lot of people didn't like it after the turn of events about halfway through the book, but I'm obsessed. I love it so so much and I can't wait to read Unravel the Dusk if that is on the TBR for June. And I bought the Fairy Loot editions and they're gorgeous, cannot wait for those. Next is It Will Fall by Sarah Harian. I had no idea what to expect from this book. I honestly thought it was kind of like a contemporary or sci-fi. It's actually fantasy in a world in which there's a kingdom that has put our empaths in slavery. Empaths are people who have magical abilities to kind of take people's emotions and turn it into magic. So they can take like fear or anger and turn it into destruction magic. They can take love and turn it into healing magic, that sort of thing. But yeah, the empaths are put in slavery until one day they are sent into the rift, which is like a huge like cavern. 
so big that 10,000 soldiers got lost in it and are assigned the task of going in and killing the like demon king to stop this destruction magic from taking over the kingdom. So it's their story. It was a really interesting magic system. It is a standalone, so it had a satisfying ending, and I loved the um, love story. Next is Malice, which is the first book of a duology. It doesn't outright say it's Maleficent. Like, the name Maleficent never once comes up in this book, but I like to think of it as a sapphic Maleficent dark retelling in which Maleficent or Alice in this case and Aurora fall in love. So in this kingdom there are graces and the graces are known for their healing and beauty and knowledge and music and um, passion and pleasure gifts whereas Alice was born half villa and has been blessed or cursed in their case with dark magic so she can only rot destruction but Aurora is not your typical sleeping beauty which I really really liked she's given more agency and a storyline essentially so I really like this version of Aurora and the ending was intense I was not ready for it and this literally just came out in April, so I have to wait forever for the next book to come out, and that's upsetting. But it was good. <laughs> this was actually the very first book of my brand new YA book club, which is a monthly club where we read YA books and discuss them together. I am in collaboration with a small indie-owned bookstore to do this book club and you get a lot of perks through the bookstore. You might be entered for advanced readers copies or ARCs as we call them. Uh, you get 15% off for books. You get $5 off the book club picks as long as you attend a meeting. If you are interested in joining, please let me know and I'll send you the Facebook group link. And finally, the best book of the month and might be my favorite book of the year, might be one of my new favorite books of all time, is An Emperor in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. In this, we are following two different perspectives. Laia, who is a scholar or like the lowest class of this empire and her family was like brutally murdered in front of her her brother was taken from her and her only hope of gaining him back is to seek out the resistance and see if that they are willing to help or aid in her rescue of him however in order for them to agree to rescuing him she is tasked with becoming a spy for the black cliff school which is where the empire masks or soldiers are trained and she is tasked to be the slave of the commandant which is like one of the most heartless cruel cold-hearted like female character villains i have ever read and so she's tasked with being the slave for her uh so it's laia's experience with that and we're also following Elias who is the son of the commandant and has been raised as a mask however he has no desire to be part of the soldier empire he just wants to be free he's actually about to run away when he is told that he is one of the top contestants or one of the contestants to enter the trials to become the next emperor so it's got school it's got uh, trials, it's got like competition, it's got enemies to lovers romance, it's got two love triangles that actually work really well, it's got like secret spying, it's got everything. Like honestly, this book is incredible and I can't believe I haven't read it before now. So yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> But those are all the books I read in May. It was quite a lot. It was a great reading month for me. I enjoyed so many books and I got so many books read and it was just a really great time overall. But thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below what you read in May and I'll check in with you guys in my next video. Bye everyone!